Welcome everyone to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. I'm blessed today to have with me Father Lawrence Carney, who is the author of a recently released book, The Secret of the Holy Face. And today we're going to talk about why this secret and this devotion is so important for our times. Can we start off with the prayer, uh, Father, before we start with the topic, please? Share it, Ron. Here we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mother, Mary, of, God, Mary, Mother of, God, of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Holy Name of God, pray for us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Um, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself, Father? Yeah, my name is Father Lawrence Carney, and I've been a priest for 16 years. And I walk the streets of various cities, praying the rosary and carrying the crucifix in hopes to bring people to the Holy Catholic Church. And I'm also a chaplain of some nuns called the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of the Apostles. And uh, Sister Scholastica, the prioress, introduced me to the devotion to the Holy Face. And when she did that, providence began to happen. And I got the Golden Arrow book, which are the revelations given to Sister Mary St. Pierre, uh, a humble nun in Tours, France in the 1840s. And these messages were to were from our Lord Jesus to combat communism and the revolution. So Sister Mary St. Pierre was a Carmelite in Tours, France. And our Lord Jesus began to give her intellectual visions, which are really high up in the order of mystical phenomenon. And our Lord told her, my favorite one is, our Lord said to her, my father's greatly offended by the human race for two crimes. That is the crime of blasphemy and profanation of Sundays and holy days of obligation. And Jesus continued and said, quote, my father is not going to punish the world so much with the elements but with the malice of revolutionary men, end of quote. So when I read that, this was before we had the lockdowns in 2019. I read this before that, like 2018, and I knew there was a problem going on in the world. But when the lockdowns of the church happened and COVID hit, this prophecy really hit home to me. Because God, our Father, is the one that's punishing us. He's the one sending us to scourge of revolutionary men. And, Ron, this is so fitting because I read the Bible from front to back a couple of years ago. And in Ezekiel, this theme is the same. God basically says, if you don't follow my commandments, then I'm going to curse you, and I'm going to send curses upon you, famines, and your enemies will come overcome you. So when this devotion is just stressing a part of God's virtue called justice, and we deserve any punishment we get from God because he's perfect. He is perfectly good, too. He, he wants what's best for us. So he knows that it's there's going to be a fight for loving and, and serving God for those souls that are going to win heaven. So this devotion of the Holy Face has helped me in so many ways, especially for stressing how important it is to give reverence to God and his commandments. We can't just make up what we're supposed to do to follow God. He has told us in his Ten Commandments. And I say this over and over again, 
if we don't get the first three commandments to deal with God, how can we get the last seven to deal with our neighbor? So the first three commandments deal with idolatry, irreverence, and blasphemy. And the main message that Jesus was telling Sister Mary St. Pierre was that our human family is blaspheming God so much. And not worse than on Sundays is irreverence. Because God deserves to be adored. And we're all, we call that the virtue of religion, where we give God what is his due, and that's to adore him. So that's the main point of this devotion. There's a lot of other revelations that were given to Sister Mary St. Pierre. But the thing I want to burn in the viewer's mind is how we approach God is very important. And the fathers of the church speak about what happens in the sanctuaries of God determines what happens in the world. So we need to have reverence in the sanctuaries of God in order for the blessings of God to come. So this is neat to know, and it gives me so much hope, is that if God is the one giving us the curse of revolutionary men, then wouldn't a good and loving God take it away once there's a predetermined amount of giving God what is his due, which is reverence and blessing his name instead of profaning it? And Father, the prophecies or the visions that were received by um, Sister Mary of St. Peter, they also referred to communism. And um, can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that the visions took place probably in the 1800s. Is that correct? And yeah. is it, how is that still relevant for us today in terms of communism? Yes. So these revelations came out in the middle of the 1840s. And that's right when the Communist Manifesto came out in 1848. And in a series of these revelations, Jesus Christ told Sister Mary St. Pierre that one of the greatest traitors to his Godhead were the communists. And so he spells them out. And Ron, in private revelation, it doesn't happen very often that we get proper names of groups or enemies of God. And when I read that, I was like, this, this is really something. It's just jumping out at the page at me. We've been fighting communism for decades now. The great Archbishop Fulton Sheen, he warned us about it in the 1830s in Belladad. And the problem with revolutionists is they know that if they can change their name to something else, that we might forget about them altogether. And they're very evasive and they're very good at this. But when I did my research on writing the book, The Secret of the Holy Face, The Devotion Doesn't Save Society, I found out that communism left its mark not only in Russia and other small countries, but in China, out of 100 million people that were killed for this revolution, 65 million of them, that's 65% were from China. And I thought to myself, someone needs to write a book, a current book on the history of communist China. And there is a book that's coming out by Tan, but written by Steve Mosier on this. I just took a look at a sneak peek at it. So communists are really good about erasing our history and giving us a propaganda that isn't truly our history. And I've learned that we really got to be careful where is history? Where does it come from? Does it come from the truth or does it come from propaganda with some kind of scheming that revolutionists want to, you know, to just trick the whole masses and nations with? So the key for that, Ron, in my next book, it'll be called The Consecration of the Holy Face and How Our Lord Draws the Soul Through the Purgative, Illuminative, and Unitive Ways. The key is we have to have reverence towards God, as I mentioned before. We have to be men and women of interior prayer so that we can hear the voice of God. And so we can discern what is truly history and what is not. And Jesus said it. My sheep will know my voice and I will know the sheep of I will know the voice of my sheep, as he says. And we can really see that in that whole movement of can cancel culture and censorship 
and how that, you know, it's not only communist countries now, but it's actually, you know, supposed democratic countries that are um, jumping on board with all of these regulations and all of these, um, you know, communist ways, really. But as you said, it's not under the name of communism. It's under the name of social progressiveness or, or something like that. Yeah. But we're seeing it. We're seeing it everywhere. The same climate, policies. Yeah, climate change. They'll just make some excuse. And that's their their plan is the great Frank Shee, the author, that great author. He wrote how communists have their system of thesis, antithesis. It's called the Hegelian dialect. And what they do is they create a problem in a society. And then when people are afraid of that problem, they create a solution. But the solution is what the communists want. And the solution is worse than the problem they instigated. And that's how they take down um, societies, is by having this constant thesis, antithesis, the Hegelian dialect. And the problem is, if we aren't people that are that have the true fear of God, which means we don't want to offend God, then we're not going to be able to see this plan, this propaganda that they're doing. We're not going to have the light to be able to have intellectual warfare against this ploy. And that's why heaven wanted to give us this devotion to the holy face, not only to stress the object of the passion, which is the very Godhead, the face of God, but it's a whole system that God has given to us, if we want to adapt it or not, it's up to us, of how to wipe out communism. And that's in the Old Testament, when the Israelite people were following God, then God would fight their battles for them. And that's what I think this devotion is all about. That's why I have a goal that a million people enroll in this devotion before I leave this world. Because I don't know what the numbers are. But God has a preordained amount of people that will fervently follow devotion to the holy face of Jesus Christ. And once that's achieved, if it will be achieved, it's contingent on us, then God will start to fight this war. And a lot of my friends and my family members tell me, talking about society, it seems like now the only way we can get out of this is by d divine intervention. So enter into the scene. My priesthood is devoted uh, a lion's share of time to, to promoting this devotion. And there's other priests coming on board. They're telling me when they get into this devotion and follow it thoroughly that they become happy because now they see a weapon that heaven has given to us to fight this darkness. And this weapon will bring a light to people's souls. And that's, it's a beautiful thing to take a devotion that was revealed in the 1840s and was given the stamp of approval by Pope Leo XIII in 1885, and which is followed by none other than that great saint, Therese of Lisieux. She was one of the first pioneer members to be part of this system. And one of the promises of those who are devoted to the Holy Face is that they will, their, their faces will shine bright in heaven. I'm sure that her face is shining bright in heaven because she's a canonized saint. And she, St. Teresa Lisieux, was named the missionary, even though she was in the convent in Lisieux. She was a contemplative. She never really left her convent, but she is a patron saint of missionaries because she's doing so much good from heaven. And she is really been instrumental in getting me fired up about promoting this devotion because she was a member. So I think she's really interceding for an army to rise up to, a, to make a response to what's been happening to us from 2019 till now with the face masks and the locking of the churches and this disease that seems to be manufactured by man. And it seems like it's not going to go away, even though COVID itself might go away. But um, the the whole um, solution that they gave really 
is they're just trying to re-implement it in different ways, like through climate change, like you said. So it's definitely not going away. It's ramping up, and we need to ramp up our spiritual battle as well from our side of things. Can you give us some practical ways on how we can use and implement this devotion in our daily yes. lives? So I recommend that people find a copy of the Vela Veronica. There's people that are selling them on the internet. They're cheap. They're just, they're not the true relic that's touched. But if people could display and maybe frame the Vela Veronica in their, oh, in their corner of their house, or maybe make a room that's a chapel and have a candle burning there. And then if people would learn how to pray the chaplet of the Holy Face, I call it a little, like a little minor exorcism for lay people. If they could learn how to pray that, it's, it's shorter than the rosary. And if people could get together and start praying, there's certain prayers. There's a manual of the Arch of the Holy Face that I recommend people can get. There's litanies of the Holy Face. There's a novena to the Holy Face. There's devotions of how to pray the rosary to the Holy Face. So there's just a few things that people can do. And I also recommend people memorize the Golden Arrow Prayer. May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most incomprehensible, ineffable name of God be ever praised, blessed, loved, adored, and glorified in heaven on earth and in the hells by all the creatures of God and by the sacred heart of our Lord and the most holy sacrament, the altar. It's a very popular prayer that was found in a blue book called the Pieta. So that's a very powerful way to make reparation to blasphemy. And so when people hear blasphemy or if they're even if they're even blaspheming God, saying his name in vain, to stop doing it. And to, to bless his name when people blaspheme it. To say, blessed be the name of God, or seek nomen dominum benedictum, which is blessed be the name of God in Latin. Beautiful. And uh, that prayer is called the Golden Arrow Prayer. And that's, that's easily found online. I'll try to put a link to that prayer at the bottom of our video today. So in summing up, Father, the secret of the holy face um, is the secret that talks about a punishment to mankind that will take place through revolutionary men. And we know that that's through not only communism, but also Freemasonry. And that our Lord actually reveals those names, communism. And does he talk about Freemasonry in these prophecies? Yes, I think Freemasonry is, if it's not mentioned specifically, it's mentioned by a bunch of authors that are surround, that, surround that, that wrote about this devotion, like Father Han Vier. He was one of the great biographers of this devotion. He was in the chapter of canons of the Arch Basilica of St. Peter's. And he mentions free thinkers and revolutionary men and Freemasons. But we know that St. Maximilian Colby, when he was studying to be a priest, he saw the Freemasons marching in parade. Uh, mocking the Catholic Church. And this devotion um, was pr probably a product of Blessed Pius IX, whose Secretary of the State was killed in cold blood in 1849 by the Freemasons. And he exiled himself into Gaeta then, and he commanded that all the churches of Rome make reparation. And so they took the Vela Veronica out, and for three days a miracle happened in Rome, and that was copied and sent all over the country of Europe, the countries of Europe. So the Freemasons are definitely a, a scourge too. And the the image of the face of Jesus that's on the veil of Veronica, do you have a, is that the one that's on the cover of your book? Can you show us that one? I don't have it with me. Oh yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, this is an image Yes. Is made by an author. The, there are many authors that saw this miracle on the Vela Veronica when it was displayed. There was a, a thin piece of silk that was white, and the liniments of the face appear on that blank piece of silk. And there was a light shining from the background, from, from the veil of Veronica. So artists were drawing that as it was happening for three hours. And so there's many different renditions of this, but it's, it's, it's a likeness of the Vela Veronica. Well, wow. so that was through a miracle that that um, painting, that drawing was made. Yes, in 1849. 
Oh, okay. Because we've seen um, images and videos of Pope Benedict that he went to visit the Vale of Veronica and was kneeling down and praying before that veil, which is a holy relic at the moment. Where I'm not sure where it is at the moment, though. The church in Rome, I'm not sure. Hello? Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's in Montepello. Yeah. That's a different image. Oh, it's a different one. Yes. Okay. And I my book, there's three major objects. There's the Shroud of Turin, which is in Tours, the Vale of Montepello, which is in Montepello, and the Vale of Veronica, which is in Rome. And each right. of them has a different object. So the Vale of Veronica is of the Passion. The Vale of Montepello, they think, is of the Resurrection. And, of course, the Shroud of Turin is concerns the death of Jesus. Wow. So with the devotion, is there any, so is that one particular image that we venerate, which is the veil, the veil of Veronica, or it doesn't, does it matter which image of the face of Jesus we venerate? Ron, that's a great question. It does matter which object we venerate because there was an arch confraternity that was placed around the veil of Veronica only. There's no confraternity or arch confraternity that I know of for the Shroud of Turin or the Vela Montepello. So when we want to fight communism, we've got to be very specific that this concerns the passion. And there's a lot of parallels. When we look at the church right now, she's going as the way of our Lord did towards the end of his life, is she's going through a passion like our Lord. For example, I speak about this a lot. The church doesn't preach like she used to, the truths. We have to read about them in the Catechism of the Council of Trent, because a lot of people are going back to those old books of history to learn of their catechisms, because we just don't hear it anymore from the pulpits. So that's just important to be connected to this system of the Bell of Veronica, the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face, because St. Therese of Lisieux joined that. And then also um, Sister Wilhelmina, who I'm the chaplain of, she is incorrupt. She was also a member of the Confraternity of the Holy Faith. She joined in 1977, and they have found her body incorrupt, which is going to go through an official investigation and hopefully a cause for canonization. So we have St. Therese of Sioux, we have uh, Sister Wilhelmina, and then we have St. Therese of Sioux's dad, St. Louis Martin, and then Venerable Leo de Pont. We have a lot of, a lot of heavy play players in this arch confraternity were nothing compared to the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's a bucket load of saints and blesseds there, but this devotion is new in order of the, the age of the church being 2000 years old. It's only been around for 150, 180 years. So hopefully people listening to this interview will be inspired to join it. Maybe they'll get something in front of their name after they die. Like and a there's saint. a reason. There's a reason why our Lord has given us this devotion for these times. It's a great combat that we can use, a weapon that we can use against the evil forces that, that we're experiencing. Yes, Ron, and that's why I name my book, The Devotion Destined to Save, to Save Society, because Blessed Pius IX said, reparation is destined to save society. And he said this in, in the 1840s when he was under attack. So his words are ringing true. If you and, and I can get a million men and women to engage fervently in this battle, it's over for them. This game's over. So I hope that this devotion becomes as big as the rosary, as big as divine mercy. Because if it does, I think that we're going to see many blessings from, from God and hopefully a triumph of the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Heart, and the Church. I think a good way to get it up and running is to start small. So how can we start small as um, Catholics that aren't really familiar with this devotion, but we want to do something every day, something small every day to, to be part of it and to help in that battle? Yeah, I think if people would get together once a month, two or more, and just pray a rosary and pray three prayers from this devotion, that it would do a lot of good. Because... The Arch Confraternity has six conditions. One is to enroll. One is to receive the enrollment papers. The third one is every day to say, O Lord, show us thy face and we shall be saved. And our Father, Hail Mary, and the glory be. 
than to promote the devotion by writing or speaking about it and to wear an effigy of it and then to go to the monthly meetings. That's how the arch confraternity set it up. So that's the hardest part is to meet face to face. You notice how I said face to face. They want to cover up our faces. <laughs> so devotion wow, is wow, a yeah. face to face coming together where two or three are gathered in my name. I am there. So I think it's beautiful. I get so many comments when people get together, especially right after the lockdowns and they couldn't get out to see their neighbors. When they start getting together, they say how beautiful it is to be around other people that think the same way, that are praying the same way. So that's how the first Arch Confraternity was set up with those six conditions. And I like to make that a, a template for other people to get together and to do that, because if we put our efforts together and do what heaven told us and what our holy Pope Leo the Thirteenth signed off on, I think that we're going to see good things. Can you repeat for us the prayer that you, the simple prayer that you just just said? Yes, O oh Lord, show us Thy face, and we shall be saved. Psalm eighty three. Oh wow, beautiful! And you pray with that, and our Father, how merry and glory be. Every day, when I wake up in the morning, that's what I do. And every person that becomes a member of the Arch Confraternity, they need to say that prayer every day. And I recommend people get a form and sign up and become a part of this army. On our website, we have a PDF so people can simply print that out and mail it in. And what's the name of the website? The name of our website is martinians.org. And it's also known as the League of St. Martin. And is that same prayer in the chaplet or is there another prayer in the chaplet? Say that again. In the chaplet of the Holy Face, is that the same prayer that's repeated on the ten beads? No, in the chaplet of the Holy Face is Psalm 67, which Pope Leo XIII used for the minor exorcism. And it is, Rise up, O Lord, and let the enemies be defeated, and let all that hate thee flee from before thy face. Psalm 67. So that's on the small beads and on the, on the Our Father beads, what, what's said, you know? The Gloria Patria, oh. the Gloria be to the Father prayer. Wow, that's a really powerful chaplet. And you said it's a minor exorcism. Yeah, because that Psalm 67 can be recited by anybody. So lay people or priests. But the minor exorcism, which has the same Psalm 67, said in Latin usually by exorcists can only be said by exorcists that have the faculties from their bishop. Plus, before and after that, Psalm 67 and the minor exorcism are a bunch of prayers in Latin that Pope Leo XIII approved for the minor exorcism. And so a lot the of la laity can say that as chaplet as a form of yeah. um, minor exorcism, is that right? Laity can say the, the chaplet of the holy face. But they can't say the minor exorcism. Right. So the holy face is like a minor exorcism for lay people. Uh, they sure. say it. It's approved by the church, holy mother of the church, for lay people to say priests. Wow. And uh, where can we find the chaplet? Is it also on that same website? Yes. We have how to pray the chaplet on our website, on one of our pages. Right. And can you just repeat for the... Last time, the, the name of that um, website, please. Yes. It's called the League of St. Martin, and it's martinians.org. And we have a conference coming up in November, a conference of the Holy Face, where I'm speaking from in Wichita, Kansas. And in May, I'm taking a pilgrimage of to France and to Italy. It's called the Pilgrimage of the Holy Face. We have all those things on our website if people want to register. We'll definitely put that in the video descriptions. Um, any final words, Father, before we wrap up? And um, would you also give us your blessing as well? Yes. Yeah, thanks for working with me on this video. It's been great. And my, my word would be, we only have one life to live. Let's give it our all. Because after death, there's heaven and hell. And there's different degrees of glory in heaven. And we don't want to talk about the different levels of agony in hell. So let's give it our all. What will people say at our funeral? 
So join the Arch Confraternity, the Holy Face, and let's attack these enemies being the best Catholics we can. And so here's my blessing. Seat nomen domine benedictum, et ex hoc nunc et in secula seculorum, domine exaudi rationem meam, et clamor meo sate venia, dominus obiscum et cum spiritu tu, benedictio de omnipotentis, patris et fili spiritus sancti descendit super vos et mani et semper. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Father Lawrence, and we'll love to have you on again in the future to discuss more about the devotion to the Holy Face. Till then, God bless you, everyone, and thank you. Goodbye.